This was the I actually this was probably the most enjoyable episode of Loki <laughs> this entire season for me. Um, unfortunately, the MCU didn't cease to exist as we know it at the end of episode four. That was actually in the script that I submitted to Marvel. It got rejected. Um, but so, yeah, I guess the TVA is gone. Who cares? Um, all the characters are in their own timelines. That was the most uh, relatively interesting part. We didn't even get to really talk last week about episode four because we were both sick. But, like, episode yeah. four ended with uh, Victor Timely turning in this spaghetti and then everybody uh, disappeared. And TVA dude, blew dude up. I thought episode four was phenomenal. This is real quick. I thought episode four was phenomenal. I thought episode five was a great follow up episode. Uh, lately, Disney Plus shows have been like very, like, sketchy on their episodes, like their penultimate ones. But man, these last two, fantastic. Now going into this episode five, like you mentioned, Mobius, B fifteen, Ob, and Casey. Everybody's gone out of TVA, and Loki is just walking around this empty TVA thing. And I thought that the cinematography in this was fucking amazing. Like, I really felt the loneliness that Loki was feeling in that moment. Like, it really reminded me of the first season when he first got to the TVA, and they kind of just left him in that room. And he was just, like, before he tried figuring out, like, the film tape thing. And it just... <laughs> he's a lonely guy, you know, and he hate. And now he now, now that he has friends, you see how much he yearns for them. And we we do get this later on when he talks with Sylvie about saying like, "I'm not really doing this for the TV. I'm doing this because I want my friends." Mm. And like, man, what a fucking character arc. That for actually, this character. yeah, I was like, okay, there's actually some fucking substance to what's going on. Finally, instead of just them running around doing things and i have no idea why yeah i would disagree that's <laughs> that just I, that's what's been going on this whole fucking uh, season they're just doing things and i'm like i have well, no idea why why well, does loki uh, fucking care and he finally says something of substance like well it's because i never had any friends and i like these people it's like okay yeah. there's some character development I mean, Thank there, you. there's definitely been character development this whole thing. I, di I disagree with that. I think there's been the things that they've been running around doing was to save the TVA. And that's all been in hopes to try and stop the very scenario that they, they found themselves in or found himself in. I think that the the film, how they filmed like Loki looking at his uh, himself and then the time loop thing. Like I thought that was brilliantly done. Um, and it turns out, obviously, uh, Victor Time, not Victor Time, but Kang and Miss Minutes had this planned out from the beginning because who the fuck has on there, like, you know, that little screen that shows the timeline things that was disappearing? Like, when she was like, thank you for our service. I'm like, or thank you for your service. Like, dude, ain't no way somebody puts that in there without it already, like, having plans for some shit like that to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, think of it this way. Remember in the first episode when um, Loki like shows up and they're trying to like arrest him and he goes and there goes on his car and like crashes it in the middle of the thing. That whole TVA was apparent. There was a giant civilization of these people, you know, and like all of them are gone too now. And I don't think that was Good. like, and I don't think that was uh, portrayed very well. That like the TVA was this live living thing. It was just on in its own little world. Um, but like they're all gone too, and I think that's like it's kind of sad. But Loki ends up like time skipping around, and he ends up seeing all of his friends on the timeline. Like we see Mobius as like Don being this. I fucking... laughed out loud when he <laughs> time skips in when Obi is carrying that stack of books, and he like knocks him over. <laughs> that shit was really funny. <laughs> That one, I, I liked seeing Don or Mobius as the the jet ski salesman. Yeah. Salesman, I'm like, of course he was a fucking jet ski salesman. <laughs> that was great. That was. I a, liked all their certain scenarios. I liked how Casey was a fucking, like he was literally like one of the people who was escaping from Alcatraz. Yeah, there was like there's a couple movies based off that. Um, well, yeah, Escape yeah. from Alcatraz. Yeah, Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> like. Uh, so, yeah, that's fucking interesting that he was one of them. He also kept trying to fucking steal shit later on, which, I don't know, I found that very humorous. 
But uh, with the help of Obi, Obi, which is kind of cool that Obi's like a science fiction writer too. And like failing or yeah, struggling well, science yeah. fiction writer. Yes. That was yeah. kind of sad. Yeah. And then he's when he says, I waited 18, I did. He's trying to buy his own books, well, he's <laughs> hype them some, up. He's trying to get some clout, man. He's trying to get some clout. That was sad. Uh, but yeah, he ends up helping Loki figure out his power in being able to time skip around. And like, like I said, I think Obi being a science fiction writer is fucking amazing. Just purely because I paused on that board where he had all of his like hypothesis of everything that was going on with Loki. Mm -hmm. And if you pause it, it basically gives you the entire rundown of the whole season. And it's cool because, you know, it's, it's obviously a science fiction show. And, like, science meets fiction. That was kind of the point of the whole season. So I thought that was pretty awesome that his, you know, um, theories on all that shit was coming true. And he was able to make a temp pad based off of just whatever the fuck. His ideas. His own ideas, basically, with the help of, like, the the handbook. It's just... I thought it was fucking amazing. Um, Loki gets everybody together after um, OB figures out the temp pad thing. And... He's like, we got the band back together. Now we're going to go and figure it out. And then they all fucking disappear. Dude, fucking Sylvie pissed me off again in this episode when dude. she was like, it doesn't matter. Nothing oh, matters. And then yeah. she's like, wait, yes, it does. I'm like, dude, yeah. what is up with you? You're the, the most, she's the most flip floppy character in this show. However, that my favorite scene was when she was listening to Velvet Underground on that couch and everything behind her is just going away and you just hear Oh, sweet nothing. Oh, that was cool. That was a good scene. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that for the first time in the sea, well, maybe second time, because I actually really felt it in the in the fourth episode. But for the, I think for the majority of people, it really felt like everything was coming apart for real. Yeah, I and, hope it stays that way. And there was just a like something on this scale, like you don't know how to get back from it, and. Obviously, Loki figures out his powers to uh, control the time skipping. And he says, like, we can go back and fix everything. And this, keep in mind, this is right after Sylvie says, or, like, there, she, Loki, you hear these voices going on from, like, the last season and this season saying that, like, all Lokis are losers and all they do is lose and that sort of shit. And he says, I can go back and fix everything. Like, what does that mean? Like, what is he going to do? Well, I think he's going to go back and he's going to stop Victor Timely from just going out there and spaghettifying himself. So I think that Victor Timely meant to go out there and his destruction started off the implosion of everything. Because they, they kind of left it off in episode four where Victor was like, don't worry, I have everything figured out. And like it was kind of ominous and they didn't really build upon that part. So I think that he had a plan with Miss Minutes and... Uh, Ravona to do like so his activation like him disappearing into the timeline started off the entire thing so I think that Loki going back to that point like he's gonna have to be the actual he's gonna instead of Victor being the person to go out there it's gonna have to be Loki who does it because he has the power to not be spaghettified so I think that that's oh boy like, I can't wait <laughs> like I think that that's what's gonna happen um but him being able to, and they said stories, like, I can change the story, I can do that sort of thing. Like, they mentioned it a couple times in this episode, and, like, I think he's becoming Loki, the god of, of stories, which is, like, from the Loki Agent of Asgard run, where he does have the, ba like, he has the powers to basically rewrite history and make it to where, you know, everything that he wants, and it's... He becomes like kind of a good guy in a way, and it's kind of the same thing that they're doing here. But I think that's really cool that we could perhaps see him, you know, become a god. Like he's gonna become a god, god. And they met, and they did mention this again in season, or I think it was in episode four where he's talking with Sylvie, where she's like, "What you want to play gods?" And he's like, "We are gods." Like hell yeah, hell yeah, brother. He's gonna come back to being a fucking god. And maybe it's been in front of us the whole time because all the promotional images in every, like, trailer, you see his, like, iconic look, like, sneaking more and more back in to each trailer um, for the seat or for each episode. And all the promotional images have been, like, slowly but surely growing his horns on everything. Like, 
I don't know, man. I think this is going to equate to him. You know, he has his friends and he'd be like, I really like you guys, but I'm a fucking god. <laughs> Put some respect on my name. And it's going to end with him just going around and being a fucking god. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm excited for it. But I like this episode a lot. I really liked it. And I'm excited to see what happens uh, What happens next. <laughs> you have anything thoughts? Any, any other thoughts on it? No, I just don't. I, I you know, the, the, Even if this next episode is cool, it's just like, this is going to go into our next discussion. It's just like, what does it matter? None of this matters. In the in the grand scheme of Marvel stuff, like Marvel is in such shambles right now, and they have no direction. It's it's this doesn't matter. It just doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Like I'm not trying to shit on it. I, I know a lot of people okay. enjoy this, like you, but it's just like I I don't know. I just am, I'm in this camp where, and I don't I can't help it. I just don't fucking care. 